Okay. Uh, with meeting of the Deerfield Conservation Commission, it is uh, the 27th of October 2016, convening around 710. Um, members present, Steve Barrett. Louis Mission. Brian Danak. Okay. Um, we have a fairly, well, we have a, a busy schedule, but I have a feeling that uh, due to the weather, we're not going to be able to handle everything we have in front of us, but we will get started. Here we have in, uh, Mr. Karish, if you'd like to take a seat up here, uh, if you'd like to, if we could, somebody grab Mr. Karish's seat. So we have a request for determination of applicability filed by John Karish for the removal of a row of trees planted by an abutter on his neighbor's property. Um, we know where the property is there, uh, 29, <coughs> excuse me, uh, River Road. And Mr. Karish, if you'd like to address the issue. Yes. I'm John Karish and I live in Hadley and we have the orange and blue oil trucks that you see going through town. You used to deliver my oil when I had oil. <laughs> <laughs> and in 1984, I bought the Bohanowitz old farmhouse. I think he made a subdivision there, Beaver Drive and a lot of streets. And I've owned it till the last couple of years and now I've turned it over to my daughter and she is, um, I'm the manager for her. And what's happened the neighbor on the number 27 planted a row of trees, probably inadvertently, and after a while, um, when I turned it over to my daughter, I had it surveyed, and we found out that all the trees he planted are on my side. Maybe there's one or two that aren't. And they're big trees now, or arborvitaes, I don't, I don't know what for sure, but they do cast a big shadow, and in the winter, the ground doesn't... Um, on thaw, you know, doesn't melt the ice. I've had one person slip already and fall, you know, because of a lot of ice. And um, there's no, and I'd like to have them removed. I get a letter recommending that they um, be removed. Uh, there's no wetlands that I can see, no cattails and no, no puddles or anything like that. So that's about all just to get them, you know, get a letter that it's okay to remove them. I don't want to get in trouble by doing it illegally. Oh, no. I, we, you and I discussed this a while back. Yes. And the way to do this is to cover all your bases. It keeps, it yeah. protects you, it protects your, your daughter. And, yeah. Um, the only issue that might come up is that it might be riverfront area, but this is not going to, there's no impact to no. my personal opinion to the, to the area. No, nothing at all. So, we have in front of us the uh, possibility, we have negative determination. Um, I kind of would look at a, let me just read a couple of these here. I guess I would look at that as a number two, the work, I hate to do this. <laughs> the work described in the request is within an area subject to protection under the act, but will not remove, fill, dredge, or alter that area. Therefore, said work does not require the filing of a notice of intent. That would be a negative number two. Sounds, sounds so good. I would move that we uh, give John a negative number two on this so he can go ahead within, I would wait the 10 days we have a 10-day waiting period, appeal period. That's good. So um, I would vote that, yes, we give him aye on I'll that. second it. Aye. Okay. <coughs> all right. Ms. Well, Garish, you are I be, all set. Will I get a letter, you know, stating that? You yes, know, you'll get a copy of this. Priscilla will get, I'll drop this off tomorrow at Town Hall. Priscilla will get this out to you. But oh. give it the 10 days so if anybody appeals, yep. you don't want to do any work until nope, the appeal period. No problem. Period. So you're all set. Yep, I hope you always go this quick. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Today is
sure. Okay, there's that one. All right, one down. Now, um, all right, the Bowden Ponds Road with the installation of piping under the road. Um, with no one here from the town to present it, I would like to, I would move that we move this to our next meeting, which I believe will be sometime mid-November with, I think, oh, I believe Thanksgiving is like the 24th, maybe, somewhere in that vicinity. So, does that work for you guys? Yeah, that's fine. So why don't we do that? Did you talk to him? Was it pressing? Was it? Um, it's been an ongoing issue. Yeah. It's not something. It's nothing new. It's not like the Stillwater Bridge, which I I've heard is a uh, kind of a real issue right now. Is it? Yeah. Is that, did I hear right on that? Did I get in a voicemail from your son about Stillwater Bridge being? Yes. A, oh, it's closed. Down it's, right. closed yeah. it's closed. Yeah. Yeah, that's an issue. It's supposed to be closed for probably. They're hoping to get it. Reopen within two months. Okay. So let's continue that then. What's the count? I think that's like eleven seventeen. Anybody have a calendar? That, or does anybody have a calendar? Oh wait, wait, Louis. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to. Do <laughs> <laughs> you like to borrow my glasses? <laughs> no, I got mine. No, I just want the calendar. All right. Does anybody have a you know how to use their what do you want to know? When is Thanksgiving is the 24th? Thanksgiving is November 24th. Which is a Thursday, so that would be the 17th. 17th. Okay, so we'll move to continue the IDA in Broughton's Prawn Road until the 17th of November. So that's off our... All right, we also have in front of us um, an IDA submitted by Greg Gardner. Uh, for the corner of Greenfield Road and Mill Village Road for a storage facility. Again, anybody here from Mr. Gardner's? Okay. Um, I'm going to also make a motion that we move that and continue until 1117. Second. Aye. Anybody want to second it before we eye it? I did. Oh, you did. I'm sorry. Did. I'm also, I can't see <laughs> and I can't hear. Oh, oh. This is going downhill really fast. So we'll continue to 1117, okay. Um, we have a request for a certificate of compliance for Pelican on DEP 1420169 that they had proposed putting a rail spur. Is anybody here from Pelican, formerly Hardig Industries? All right, um, should we take a look at that? Flying through this thing tonight. Yeah, this all f expired, so yeah. They never did anything. They never did anything on it, so that was back, I can't believe it was that long ago, it was long. 2007. No. Yeah, sorry Lou. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say that we should give them their certificate and sign off on it. I'll second it. Aye. Aye. I wouldn't have thought that long ago either, Lou, to be no, honest I, with you. No, I remember going out there, but yep. I don't think it was that long. No, I agree with you. So this would have expired three years after its issuance. Uh oh. Okay. Yeah, it was filed 7-17-2007. Okay. All right. I think this is the model of good government. We're just buzzing right through this for you. We're here from the government. We're here to help you. Okay, where is? All right, that's that. Okay, all right. 
So now it brings us to a notice of intent for 31 Elm Street proposed new Cumberland Farm site demolition of, a, of an existing house and construction of a convenience store and gas station. So if you would like to come up, introduce yourself, and then we can go over the particulars of this. <coughs> now, did you receive the file number from DEP today? I think we just got an email from New England Environmental. Okay. Representative that, um, that assisted the, that the president yep. the So I, I do have the DEP number, and I, I sort of the three or four comments that yep. they issued as well. So um, I'm, I'm happy to preliminary address those as well. Sure. So. so if you'd like to introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, for the record, my name is Philip Henry with Civil Design Group. We were the civil engineers uh, on, the, on the project. Um, I guess what I'd like to do is preliminarily walk the commission through uh, the project from existing conditions and proposed conditions and, and perhaps touch on uh, two topics of interest, uh, mainly stormwater uh, and obviously the, the culvert crossing, and then I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, so uh, as everyone I'm sure is familiar with the project, the site's located at 31 Elm Street at the intersection uh, of Elm Street and, and, and Route 5 and 10. And it's actually an assemblage of two parcels. The smaller parcel is about a half an acre that, that houses the, the actual house at 31 Elm. And then their side and rear yard essentially is the um, second parcel of the assemblage, same ownership. Uh, totaling one and a half acres. So in total, the project's site is about two acres, um, of which we're, we're only disturbing maybe, I would say, 75% of that. Um, what you're looking at here is the, the proposed site plan. Uh, if, you were, if we were to superimpose the, the house, that, that house would be sitting right here facing, <laughs> facing Elm Street. The project is uh, it's comprised of a 4,700 square foot C store. Let me just grab a pointer. 4,700 square foot C store uh, located here with, with 27 parking spaces, 12, 11, I would say 15 parking spaces along the front and some supplementary parking along the side along Elm Street, totaling 27. There's also four proposed uh, fuel dispensers um, perpendicular to, to the convenience store located here. Uh, and as you can see, we have an access drive on, on Elm Street and uh, a proposed, a proposed a right in and right out only access drive on Route 5 and 10. Uh, in, in working with New England Environmental, uh, they went out to the site and they had flagged uh, BBW along the southerly edge of the property within this forested area here and then wrapping around is a bit of a, a, BBD, a BBW finger, if you will, that wraps northerly, hugging, hugging Route 5. Um, and then within this channel, or, or within this uh, BBW, they identified about an 8 to 10 foot wide inland bank um, for which we are proposing to cross. Uh, that crossing here is, is shown as, as a hatch. It's a, it's a 19 more or less 19 foot wide, four and a half foot tall uh, aluminum or metal uh, crossing, um, circular shaped. There's a detail of it on, uh, in, uh, on page nine, sheet 9.5, mm -hmm. for which we also propose the, uh, the culvert crossing standards. Uh, and if, you were, if you're familiar with those standards, those standards mainly deal with two two particular requirements. The, the what was that? Uh, we're just we're still looking to look at your. Oh, sorry. Your crossing. Not nine point five. If you look in the bottom right hand corner of each sheet, there should be a, a, a number, a page number. Oh, in that packet is probably Z folded toward towards the back. I can flip through here as well. Yes, mm -hmm. here's, a, here's a typical section of the folder. 
this typical section of the code over here. Uh, so, so this, this looking this way, uh, root here it is five right and ten. Root five and ten is essentially coming out of the page. You have a depth graph. So that that crossing, uh, or that 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 culvert is proposed to be 19, just over 19 feet wide. And, and if, if you're familiar with the with the, uh, the crossing standards, it deals with two particular requirements, and that is uh, the crossing span. And, and by regulation, it's it's 1.2 times the the inland bank or the bank width, which in this case is 8 to 10 feet. However, we decided to span the actual wetland with the BBW width. Uh, which is about 15 and a half feet. So applying, so applying uh, a 1.2 times that that 15 and a half, you get to about 18.6, for which we chose the the next the next uh, um, standard size culvert up from that. Uh, from there, you can calculate your openness ratio based on which is basically the cross sectional area by the crossing length, which is about 42 feet, uh, and that standard. Um, we, we more than exceed that standard. I think that ratio is 0 0.8. We, we are one and a half times that ratio. So our intention was to, to provide no disturbance to the wetland itself, the wetland or the inland bank. So we're completely spanning the BBW. Uh, there may be some temporary disturbance just for the installation of, of the actual um, um, device itself, but um, obviously that will be restored in kind. But the, the intention is to is to minimize or actually stay out of the wetland even during construction. Um, have you you have not heard back from New England Environmental regarding the four points that uh, DEP raised in their file, issuing the file number? No, no, we've not. But I, but I, I like I said, I just read them yeah. momentarily. Yeah, so, we just saw them this evening ourselves. Yeah, so so points three and four really speak to. Or comments three and four really speak to the the culvert crossing itself, and mm -hmm. it basically says that this 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 may jump us into um, a limited project. Um, and um, based on my conversations with doing an environmental, the way I understand it, the, the way it boils down to is we we would neither need to decide to to pay an additional fee um, associated with with the you know, the proposed work or uh, work with DEP on providing some sort of <coughs> mitigation, whether that be additional replication area or some other sort. So as I understand it, we, we have an option to, to work with DEP. Has that been the commission's experience in the past with, with crossings? Well, on a, on a project of this scope, to be honest with you, what we almost invariably have done in the past is we take all of the information that's been presented. Mm -hmm. We assume that it's good, honestly, but we then usually almost 100% of the time send it out for independent review. That's right, yeah. And at that point, our people, our engineers, would address any of the questions that DEP had raised, mm -hmm. review the entire project. Normally, they would then come back to us, these are our recommendations, and that's what we normally go with, and say, okay, this is how you need to tweak this. That being said, and I've said this before, I think this is a good project for the town of Deerfield. This is my personal opinion. Mm. Um, I don't want to speak for the board, and I don't want to speak for our engineers. But I personally think this is a good project. I'd like to see it happen, but it has to happen properly. Mm. It has to be done. That we, we, can't, we need to do the right thing by the town. We need to do the right thing by the, the regulations. Um, so that being said, I think that uh, being that Mickey hasn't had a chance to get back to you on all of this stuff, mm -hmm. what I would like to do is make a motion that we take and refer this to um, for independent review. And at that point, continue this until next month. And I doubt, frankly, that we'll have anything done by the 17th. I mm -hmm. don't see that happening that quickly. I don't know what your time frame is for this, but. Well, it looks like we're going to be filing with Planning Board and ZBA for the December hearings. So, and I think we had discussed collectively uh, in, at the informal meetings that perhaps 
should you hire a peer reviewer to review the stormwater in the site that, that, that the planning board and ZBA can also use that same comment? John and I, yeah, we the two boards have worked very, very well together, not duplicating our efforts. And our stormwater management exactly. report would be, it has normally been acceptable to the planning board. I will not sit here and speak for the planning board because I can get in enough trouble all by myself. I don't need that. So, um, so at this point, what I would suggest is that we make a motion to send this out for independent review, mm -hmm. try and get this done so we can present it for our December meeting, uh, which I assume will be somewhere around the 18th. If it's the fourth, I'm assuming the December, the 25th is. Uh, yeah. So. So it, as far as timing, the only, and, and, and we want to do the right thing too. We, we need to respond to DEP and we, we, certainly oh, absolutely. Want to, we certainly want to work with the peer reviewer to resolve any concerns that he yep. or she may have. But I guess as far as timing, is it, is it, are we just anticipating that by the time we send it out to the peer reviewer and, 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 and they get it back, <coughs> that, that, that that will not happen by November 17th? I, you know, it's that it, that gives us three weeks to get this out, have them review it, have them get together with New England Environmental. It might be difficult. I can't okay. can't guarantee it one way or another, okay. but we will get the process started tomorrow morning of getting the engineer to review it. And <clears throat> at that point, you know, we'll try and push it, but we're not going to push it so hard that, you know, it yeah. doesn't get done properly. Yeah, and we don't want that either. Yeah, and I think that all parties concerned want to have this done, the T's crossed, the I's dotted, and all that. So at this point, um, I'd like to make that motion, and anybody second? Second. Aye. Aye. So we'll continue it, and we'll get it started tomorrow. We'll keep you posted. Okay. Feel free to shoot an email into Priscilla or okay. give a phone call, okay. and uh, we'll get you all the information of who will be doing the review and okay. working with Mickey's group. Great. All right. All right. Thank so, you. So thank you for coming in. Appreciate it. Drive safely. Yeah. It's getting better out there. <laughs> yeah, it's getting a little bit. A uh, little bit better. A little bit better. for comments in front of us for Grandview Estates modification plan. Is anything submitted with that, Lou? Uh, I didn't even. There's something there, I think. I think she has it for her. Is this it here? So. We don't. There shouldn't be any. Uh, this is a. Is this this is it? Isn't it white noise? I honestly I hope so, don't. Because it's the only one we know of. <laughs> I honestly. No, this is off of Matthews Road. Matthews. Five lots abutting a common private way which oh, ends in a cul-de-sac. Wasn't that what's Missoula's old project? Oh, that was, he was up. That was 10. Oh, yeah. Well, at, least 10. yeah at least 10. Yeah, um, at least 10. Yeah, it's a 2003 plan. Oh. I was just, I didn't even look at it, I just... I, uh, I honestly, I, just, I, I assumed it was... I have to admit that I did the same thing. Right. 
Request for comments. As this far was a, as this went along. This was for years ago. Yes. I know you came in for that, ma'am. Would you? Do you have any questions on this? I, where is that? This is off of Matthews Road. You thought it was the other one too, huh? I what? You thought it was the Sugarloaf Street project? Well, I was wondering if it was, but apparently not. We all were thinking the same thing. <laughs> I just, yeah, when they. But I have comments about the. Um, I have a little environment thing. Um, it's a I actually don't. You, they're still out there. Well, I just. That's not. That's see. That's not has any, That has nothing to do right. with our purview. I mean, right. we're strictly what about wetlands. The, um, the wetlands there and having underground gasoline tanks in what is perceived as a wet area. Those are regulations that we again. We we have. Those are state regulations. I was, you know, with the. We're responsible for the wetlands issues. Under what happens on the other superseding uh, laws, we have no no say on. So the wetlands is separate from where they're building it. If I understood him correctly, there'll be an impact. There'll be exactly. So if it's a gasoline tank leak, would that not affect the wetlands? You know, on a, if, if a car crashes in the parking lot and the gasoline leaks from that, I mean, we we can't legislate on what ifs. Okay. My other concern is about the traffic flow. They're so close to Elm Street, but then again, that's not your yeah. <laughs> that's not your area either. It's okay. Unfortunately, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, we can't be. <laughs> it's that's all right. So a suggestion, though, you might want to plan to bring calendars with you in future meetings. It seems like this was kind of a... Um, well, thank you for your suggestion. We mm -hmm. will, we will do that. It just seemed rather unprofessional the way... Well, thank you, ma'am. We appreciate your feedback. We will, we will make note of that. Bye. So I would say that um, our comments have normally been, our official comments, is <laughs> normally no comment. I mean, this... This goes back, really, it's really quite detailed, and it goes back 13 years. But that's all they asked for was requests for comment, not <laughs> that we're going to do this. Or <laughs> they didn't know, and it doesn't say. I mean, yeah, I don't understand the whole thing. I mean, if we did a, if they're modifying it. They'd have to resubmit. I, would. I guess the, my question would be, they're modifying, I mean, okay, they're modifying something. Is there an impact to any of the wetlands or any RDAs that might have been filed back 13 years ago? I think that personally, I think they should be bringing us a little bit more than just asking for comments, yeah. Asking for a comment on something that's this complicated that goes back this long. Now, who's this from? This is from. Uh... This is from Thomas Reedy Esquire. It's a modification of a subdivision plan, Grandview Estates LLC. It says, "Please accept this letter as a request for modification on behalf of the applicant, Grandview Estates LLC, of the previously approved subdivision plan entitled Grandview Estates Alternate Procedures Plan (APP) Subdivision Deerfield, Massachusetts, dated July 7th." 2003. Uh, enclosed, you will find the following the project narrative, the definitive subdivision plan from 2003, an updated subdivision plan, and a certified abutters list. Um, <clears throat> they would like this placed on the agenda for the November 7th planning, 2016 planning board hearing date. Um, should you have any questions or concerns with regard to this request or require clarification of any information contained within these documents, please contact me immediately. Lastly, please coordinate with us regarding submission and publication of legal notice in accordance with MGL Chapter 41, 
yada, yada, yada. So, and then we have a very involved I don't know if you guys want to read through this and uh, just, I would think they'd have to come in and resubmit, wouldn't they? Honestly, 13 years is a long time. Before we before we sign off, they want to combine lots and shorten the road. I would like to at least talk to John Waite at, on the planning board and find out what their feeling is on all of this. Because yeah. a 13 year old plan, then you're coming in and asking us to comment on it. Yeah. I, I would think they need to come in and resubmit. So if it works for you guys, I'd like to take a little bit of time we'll talking to John. They don't need this sign. They want it done by November 1st. But. Um, Do we have issues up there? No, that was. There was some road drainage stuff. I can't imagine that there wouldn't be because they've got conservation easement. See, he's changing mm -hmm. this part, it looks like. You've got a conservation but forest management plan. It was a drainage through mm -hmm. here. Yeah, that's right. We did. Did they include that's anything from, the, from our work back in 2013? Butters list. I'd like to be able to find out what's in our file and what uh, what the planning board yeah. actually what their thoughts are because none of this is really, on, really doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't address anything. So what I'd like to do is find out what's in our file. Ask Priscilla tomorrow to see if she can dig anything up. It might be um, apropos and find out uh, what, what they actually expect from us. All right, we can do is just put comments on hold till next meeting. Yeah. That's what it sounds like because there's not no comments really no in further yeah. research at it. Yeah, I mean, I or, or at least to find out what the comment, what's on our file and Talk to John Wade about what they're actually, what they're thinking about. Because yeah. I'm sure that there had to be some sort of, because we were involved at some point. Oh, yeah. I remember the meeting. You know, we had more people that were squawking at the time. So let's continue that also. Yes. Uh, I'd make a motion to continue it until we can get further information. Second. Aye. Aye. All right, let's see if we can dig meetings up. All right. Let's, what do we have here? Minutes for review and Conservation Commission mail. Here about a meeting that happened last week that we were regarding stormwater management at Mount Wachusett College. Um, let's see, Saturday, October 29th is the MAC Fall Conference, which would be this Saturday. I know I am unfortunately unable to go.
We have had, I, I have had some communications with Kevin McCaffrey from the, and I think you guys have been copied on all of it for the solar yeah. project up no. in East Deerfield. And they have been working, working on, on getting, that. addressing, because we were getting a lot of recommendations and every month the same, or every week the same recommendation. So I did send um, Kevin just a, an email to prod him along that uh, you're making recommendations. I don't see them ever being followed through on. And they have started to follow through. They're doing all the electrical work, filling in the, so we should be in, um, in pretty good shape up there. So it's amazing what a little bit of <laughs> grease will get. And we have a letter here regarding Mark Whiteman's project over on Sugarloaf Street. guys from we have letters that really the one from David White regarding his concerns which he had laid out I think in detail on in several meetings uh, we also have a letter from Anna Lee I don't want to I butcher this name Wolf cool wool cool wool cool whatever and she also has a number of concerns that the planning board uh, we'll be addressing Connecticut River Watershed, Watershed Council annual report for 2016. We have a cutting plan that has been submitted and approved and a letter from the Mass Association of Conservation Commission's advance notice dues amount for fiscal 2018. Dues amount will be two hundred and seventy-five thousand, <laughs> two hundred seventy-five dollars, not thousand dollars. My God, this is getting expensive <laughs> to run this thing. <laughs> Make the check out to one S Barrett. <laughs> so dues will be due by September thirtieth, uh, two thousand seventeen. So we're in good shape there. So that would be the extent of our mail. Up next, we have minutes for review from our meeting of September 22nd. If you gentlemen would like to, well, okay. I'll look at it. I did. Yes, we'll, that will be up to us. Well, Tim was here, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> and then we had John, actually that was when, when John was in uh, last week, I mean, excuse me, last month. So, Brian, I would make a motion that we accept them as submitted. Second. Aye. 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 Review mail. We have no old business. Um, set our date for the next meeting. We have no other business not reasonably anticipated. Next meeting, 11, 17, 16. Yes. 7 p.m. Town Hall. So with that, I would make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Aye. Aye. We're out, Chris. <laughs> <laughs>